Coming up this week, our adventure takes us to Castleton for a misty morning on Mam Tor. We then head north into the Dark Peak to a spot known for some incredible rock formations and possibly some of the best views we've ever experienced in the Peak District. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle. And I'm Hayley. And this morning you are joining us on a very early start in the Peak District as we're heading up to Castleton to try and witness a rare weather event. Not exactly the mists that we were looking for. Um, we'd come up this morning to Mamtor because we'd heard that there might be a cloud inversion or otherwise known as a temperature inversion. It's a fairly rare sort of weather phenomenon. Um, only if the, the weather's just right and the temperatures are just right does it actually happen. Uh, I did see on the Met Office this morning that it's supposed to be quite misty here up in Castleton. Um, it definitely is misty. <laughs> which it is, it's very misty, but the mist is in the wrong place. Regardless, we're still going to head up to the top of Mam Tor. We're going to show you what you can or can't see from the top anyway, because this is the real Peak District. <laughs> It's also incredibly windy and rather cold this morning. It's kind of all the weather that we didn't want. <laughs> but we're nearly at the top of Mam Tor now anyway, so we'll see what we can see. As you can see, we've got some incredible views. <laughs> Not quite the views from Mamtor that we'd hoped for this morning. Um, Not the views that we're used to. I'll yes. stick some drone footage in here of what it's supposed <laughs> to look like. Okay, well, that was a little bit of a fail. Um, we had planned to get right up to the top of Mam Tor. We were gonna have like a romantic coffee up there. We we're gonna take some pictures, get some cinematic shots of hopefully what was gonna be a cloud inversion, um, but it just didn't work out. Um, if you do wanna come here and this is something that you want to see, you're gonna have to get lucky um, or really know your weather, because uh, we didn't. But yeah. um, we were always gonna go to a second location today, uh, which is a spot just down the road. So we're gonna head down there now and then we'll see you when we get there. Okay, so we've come to uh, a place that's got a bit of a weird name. It's called Cutthroat Bridge Car Park. Um, 
don't think I want to know how it ever got that name. Uh, but this is sort of like a, it's pretty much a lay-by um, on the Snake Road along the A57. And this is uh, one of the spots that you can park uh, if you're going to the location that we're going to today. Uh, and the spot that we're going to is a place called Doon Edge. Um, because there's some pretty interesting rock formations up there. Some rock formations that I want to take pictures of for years um, and it should promise some pretty spectacular views as well. So we're going to head up there and see what we see. Okay, so not two minutes from uh, the A57 and Cutthroat Bridge car park. We're already out on the moors. Uh, the weather here is considerably better than it was at Mamtor. Mamtor from this destination, by the way, is only about a 16 minute drive. So shows how changeable the Peak District weather is. Um, we've never done this route before, so I'm not gonna pretend I know exactly where we're going, but we do have an OS map with us. We've got a compass just in case. Um, but we're going to crack on. Um, we're hoping to make our way up to Doon Edge. I think the the mileage for today is it's only sort of like two or three miles each way, sort of there and back. Um, so we'll get cracking. So I think moorland is fast becoming one of our favourite types of landscape here in the Peak District. Um, not quite sure what it is, but we seem to keep visiting them, don't we? Yeah, I think it's got a lot of resemblance to Scotland and we've got fond memories of Scotland. So I think the fact that it kind of looks like that is uh, a bonus for us. But this area is actually a triple SI and we've already seen an abundance of uh, wildlife here, so it's been quite... We're surrounded yeah. by like flying red grouse. Uh, there's like, <laughs> we've seen some hunting birds as well already. Um, you can probably hear them cackling in the background. <laughs> I'll see if I can get some shots of them. But um, yeah, really interesting little spot. I think I've worked out why I like the moor so much. It's because it doesn't take too long to feel like you're just in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I guess it's a form of escapism, but let us know down below in the comments, what's your favorite type of Peak District landscape? Do you like the big hills, the big rocky outcrops, or do you like the moors like us? Let us know, we'd love to hear from you. So we really enjoy bringing Papa out to these walks uh, but his old lead kind of posed some challenges because we had to hold that and uh, deal with the camera at the same time. So we went out and brought a special lead which is called a jogger's lead and it attaches to uh, like a belt or we we've attached it to our bag. Um, we didn't see a belt at the time so if anyone could uh, recommend a special belt that's for uh, dogs that you can attach a lead to, uh, we'd really appreciate that so leave something in the comments. I 
So uh, we're slowly sort of making our way up to the top of uh, Derwent Edge. It's starting to get busy already. It's a Sunday. It's probably only sort of like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And there's already a lot of hikers coming up this way. We've seen a lot of cyclists. Apparently this is a pretty popular cyclist route. I have no idea. Um, I'm guessing it's uh, a byway as well. So if you're looking to do a bit of mountain biking in the Peak District, maybe check out uh, Derwent Edge. Speaking of Derwent Edge, we're now fast approaching the edge for the very first time and also approaching one of the best views we've ever seen of the Peak District. of the Peak District can't get any better. This is like one of the best views that I've ever seen. It's crazy. Pulling ourselves away from the views, we pressed on up along the path, past some interesting rock formations as we made our way along the edge to our next destination. The coffee that we were supposed to have at Mam Tor was now long overdue and we had the perfect spot picked out. So we've made it to uh, stop number one today, which is uh, a set of gritstone rocks called the Coach and Horses. Uh, I think they're also known as the Wheel Stones. Um, but apparently you can see this huge clump of rock um, down at the road and from a distance it looks like a Coach and Horses. Uh, but for today, this is our spot where we're going to have our coffee. It's also dinner time for this one. It's a bit code. <laughs> uh, let us know if you say that, guys. <laughs> Means it's cold. Um, well, what were we saying about the wheel stones? Yeah, they, they look fun. Fun? Were they wheelie good? They were wheelie good. We'll show ourselves <laughs> out. We'll show ourselves out. Um, yeah, this was a nice little uh, spot for a coffee. It's very windy up here. It's pretty flat. It's all moorland. Um, but we're now going to head over to the last part of this vlog, which is 
Uh, the Salt Cellar, which is another really popular spot in the Peak District. It's super popular uh, with landscape photographers as well. Uh, so we're going to go and see if we can find it because we've never been. Mm. Uh, so that's where we're going to go now. Heading north, away from the coach and horses, along the edge, we continue to follow the well-marked path. We walked for about another mile before stopping to check the map and eventually found a small cut-in that headed out towards the edge. Walking through the heather, we slowly got closer and the salt cellar finally revealed itself for the very first time. the salt cellar it was a little bit out of the way and kind of hidden uh, but if you do have OS maps uh, once you get to where it says salt cellar uh, there's a tiny little path which kind of leads yeah, off, to runs off to the edge. the edge so it's worth going down there because then you get to see this and there it is <laughs> uh, we've never seen it I've never seen it I've wanted to see it for years um, it's actually a bit bigger in person uh, than I expected as well so um, we're going to check it out, we're going to get some pictures of it uh, and chill out for a bit. Okay, we've actually just come down off the top of the edge um, because it's incredibly windy up on uh, Derwent Edge today. We're hiding sort of underneath the salt cellar at the moment. Although we're hiding underneath the salt cellar, we've got some incredible views of the moorland. You can see Bleaklow and Howden from here. You can see all three reservoirs uh, from up here as well. Um, you can see uh, Lady Bower, Derwent and Howden Reservoir. And on a clear day, sort of like it is today, uh, if you look far enough in the distance, you can also see Mamtor, and you can even just about make out when it's passed. So um, it kind of makes the Peak District feel a bit smaller than it actually is, because uh, you can see so far on days like today, so it ties all the locations together. Okay guys, that is a wrap on the salt cellar, uh, the wheelstones and do and edge. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, this is probably one of the best locations we've ever come to in the Definitely. Peak District. If you're looking for a fairly easy going walk that's well laid out, uh, well signposted with some mega mega views, uh, don't look any further than do and edge. So if you enjoyed the video, please give us a big thumbs up. And if you like the look of our faces and you want to see more Peak District adventures just like this, hit that little subscribe button down there, because that way you're going to know the next time we upload another video. So hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Peace.